Welcome to Desk Geek. So I'm excited about this video, but it's bittersweet for me because this is the end of our 30 day challenge. This is the final thoughts on Linux. So quickly, let me just talk about how we started here. So when I started this Linux 30 day challenge, it was really something that was personal. It was something that I wanted to do to take Linux to the next level, to stop just kind of utilizing it on the side or on some older PCs and really, really experience Linux for what it is and see, can it replace Windows as a complete desktop solution? Is it more than just something to revitalize an old piece of equipment? Can I put it on new equipment, the latest equipment? Can I game on it? Can I video edit on it? Can I replace the Windows environment's entirety? And I had no expectations for not only the popularity of the videos, but also whether or not at the end of it, I would be doing this recording right now in a Windows environment or not. <clears throat> and as I've said from the very beginning, I do not dislike Windows. I don't hate Microsoft. I've made my living off of a lot of their products. So for me, it's more of, I don't like the direction that Microsoft and Windows has gone. I do not like the privacy concerns and issues that have specially arisen in Windows 10. And I'm just not a fan of their current direction. So that's kind of what led me looking deeper and a lot of people looking deeper into kind of uh, other solutions out there. And some people take, you know, the very um, popular route of going to a Mac operating system and uh, others feel that, you know, the Mac is something that's kind of overpriced or that you're really not getting a lot of value for your money. And so they look for other solutions, maybe like Linux. And I've owned plenty of Macs, and I like Apple products as well. I think they're good for what they do. Um, but I've never looked at an Apple product as something that could replace my entire Windows environment or that I enjoyed more than a PC. Uh, I just like building my own equipment, and Mac really doesn't allow for that. I mean, you can create a Hackintosh and things, but it's not something sanctioned by them that they want you doing and uh, I don't want to deal with constant issues with configurations and things as their operating systems progress so that's why Mac isn't necessarily a great solution for me although I've owned plenty of MacBooks and played with them and they're fun and there's great things like Final Cut etc inside them uh, that a lot of people like them so I'm not putting down anything in particular but I say all that to say I had no expectations for this um, as you watch the videos, as I watch back, you can see my excitement for Linux grow. And it became more of me defending or loving and talking about all the wonderful things that I'm finding than anything that was negative. Uh, although if there was a problem that I presented, I didn't cut it out of the videos and I talked about it and the community helped. And I think that excitement happened for a couple of reasons. Number one is I was realizing that Linux was a complete solution. There wasn't anything that was missing. I wasn't fighting or having to sit in the terminal for hours on end, trying to write in code I didn't understand to get things to function. It just, it worked. It worked just like any other operating system you would install. Um, depending on the distribution you choose, there may be more customization and things that you have to do, but you know, any of the issues I experienced and have installed thousands of Windows machines because of my job and what I used to do for a living. Uh, loading Windows on machines was like a assembly line operation. I've just done it so many times with so many computers that we were building for a while that um, it, it's second nature. So I can, I can definitely say that you have issues in Windows when you're installing it. I have a coworker right now who's got a problem keeping him from being able to uh, complete some video editing that he wants to do because his Windows has been down for over a week and can't figure out what the problem is. So all operating systems have their issues. This is a very advanced thing here that you're dealing with. It's controlling all of this hardware and software and bringing it together and presenting it to you uh, in, in this beautiful format. So they're very complex and there's going to be issues and errors and things that pop up. So there was nothing in Linux that came about that I wouldn't have seen in any other operating system. So that was pretty exciting uh, that Linux has come so, so far from when I played with it, say, six years ago. On top of that, the 
lack of having to deal with licensing issues. So let's talk about a Windows installation here real quick. So if I want to reinstall Windows on my machine, I'm going to have to first find my license key, right? Um, download an ISO file, install it, put my license key in it, and I will undoubtedly be told this license key is already in use. You're going to have to call this 800 number to activate this key. So then you call the 800 number, you sit on that line, an automated thing comes on, it tells you to put in your key, you dial in your key to your phone, and then it eventually tells you, well, how many computers do you have this installed on? You say one, it checks, it either decides, oh, uh, that's BS, we're going to transfer you to a rep, where it says, okay, here's your new key. This is going to give you a new one, and you put that in, and now I've got Windows. But now I'm not done. Now i got to go get my Adobe Premiere key. So now I've got to find my Adobe software, get it, install it, then i got to put its key in, and guess what? I'm going to have the same problem there too. I'm going to have to call up Adobe and have to prove to them that I'm not utilizing this on multiple machines. Then I'm going to have to find the key for my antivirus, my firewall software, my um, uh, graphics editing software, which is also another Adobe product. Uh, I'm going to have to go through all of this pain and suffering. And that's just to get my windows up and running to the point where I can utilize it. Uh, now, I can use some of this open source software in a Windows environment as well. So there's some workarounds there, but that doesn't fix the issue I would have with Windows. Then I've got the update issues, right? Updating in the middle of me working on something and the reboots that happen, although there's a lot less of that now going on, admittedly, but that was very annoying. And I still have the privacy concern problems with the metadata grabbing and information Cortana storing, etc. that I just have issues with. Or if I want to install Ubuntu, I download Ubuntu Studio. I have my video editor, my image editor, uh, Steam, everything here ready to go. OBS, Skimp, it's all there. And I just start going. I have no license battles, no calling phone numbers, no arguing, and no security issues to that degree. Not saying Linux is a perfect secure fort. If you go out there and start downloading files and everything else, you're going to have issues like you can on Windows or Mac or anywhere else. Certainly most programs and malware and things are written for Windows because it's the biggest population, but it's not immune to that stuff. It's just more secure, less likely uh, that it's going to happen. So that really stuck with me about the length of time of getting up and running. Every time you guys would recommend a new distribution, I could download the ISO, put it in, and go. That's it. It was just, I was ready to rock and roll, ready to play, ready to start editing videos, whatever I needed to do. And to me, that huge time saver is really important. But the main thing I want to get across is, I was checking out a program, um, I think it's called Crossover. It's based on Wine, and but it's a paid for version if you will of of wine from what i understand i don't know a lot about it but i was reading about it because it was the article was talking about you can install office 365 through it now and uh so i downloaded the program because i thought well i'll show people some of the things you can do with this crossover and maybe check some configuration differences between it and wine and so i sat there at the install other software where it gives you a list of software that you can install the windows based software and I was going through the programs. There's hundreds of them. Very interesting program. And there was nothing I wanted to download. I literally just sat there. I was like, I don't need any of this. I've got Caden Live. I've got Blender. I've got OBS. I've got GIMP. I don't need... I've got Steam on Linux. I don't need anything. So the only thing I could do, the only thing I found, I was like, eh, maybe I'll install that was Steam for Windows so that I can install. So I downloaded Steam for Windows and downloaded um, Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition and played through that, which it worked fine. So it was really interesting for me to have that moment because, like I said, I didn't plan on not going back to Windows. But at that moment, I couldn't figure out what I needed about Windows to even put an emulation of it within a system. And that, to me, was very telling. It was not very only very telling about how far Linux has come uh, as far as an operating system environment, but how far it's come with all of the open source software out there available to you for you to completely stop using all these other products 
that you've been spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on. So we've had some fantastic videos. We've talked about gaming. We've talked about, you know, GoPros and cameras and video editing and gaming and Steam links, you know, as you can stream media across your home. And we've done uh, advanced audio. We've talked about all of the equipment that I use for the audio platform working out of the box. We've kind of covered a very wide gamut. And through that, we've been able to be successful in all those ventures. And the videos have been fantastic. But mostly the community, the community not only around these videos, but Linux in general, it's unlike any other community out there. You cannot go into a Windows forum and get the kind of support that you get from the Linux community. People care. They're excited that you're excited about Linux or that you're interested in learning. They want to teach you. You're not going to get these responses like, read a manual, idiot. You know, people actually, okay, well, you know, run this command. Tell me what it says there. Okay, you need to do this, 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 and this. And they're there to help you, whether it's an IRC chat on forums, just web searches of the tons of articles out there to help people with any strange issue or peripheral or thing they're trying to connect. There are people out there who are willing to help you. The YouTube community alone, I mean, the amount of shares on Twitter uh, for the Linux videos, the amount of comments and just love that's been received on this channel from the Linux community is incredible. And that speaks to volumes about whether you want to stay within Windows or Linux, to me, it's like if I go back to Windows, I'm losing part of that community that has been so good uh, to me and has taught me so much in this, in this short amount of time. So talking about the developers and things, you can see this thank you to the developers. There's a ton of work that goes into these programs, and this is just a few programs I picked. And there are many ways you can contribute because I hate the idea that we think of all this is just free, especially if you start making money off of it, right? If you start making money off of using some of these programs, you definitely should look at contributing back. And that could be through reporting bugs, finding issues, um, you know, talking about enhancements on the forums with the developers or the teams so they have ideas. It could be monetary. It could be contributions. It could be buying swag, right? T-shirts and things like that. Um, but I've made some donations to a couple of these on here because obviously I've benefited from ad revenue and things for these video series. And these these programs have just been incredible, incredibly fun to utilize. And uh, these individuals here are geniuses that helped develop and make this. And obviously the community, open source community that comes around and helps with that. Uh, are, are equally amazing. So the top developers for 2015 and 16 on the Linux kernel are down here on the left, and the companies that contributed to Linux here on the right. So like Intel, Red Hat, Samsung, SUSE, IBM, etc. These are companies that have an active investment within Linux. And so I think um, another way that you can contribute is certainly uh, praising these companies for the work that they've done with Linux and supporting them through purchases of their products. Um, there's a lot of money for developers here within the Linux platform too. Um, when you think about open source and some people think free, uh, obviously there's two, there's open source software that's not necessarily free, et cetera, but for the most part, you can go and download this stuff. Anything that I've utilized anyways, uh, without making any payments, they may have, uh, recommendations for donations and things, but the way the developers can make money is obviously support. Um, they can make money through uh, offering support for companies specifically too. Uh, enhancements, customizations on these software packages for specific uses for companies or individuals. Uh, ad revenue from websites and swelling, selling, not swelling, selling swag and things like that related to their products. Uh, donations, obviously they can make money that way. So there's a lot of ways for developers to make money in an open source environment and you've got a bunch of people contributing their time and things like that into it, which makes it beautiful and makes it so that there's not a graveyard of programs sitting out there that just go untouched. So there's just a lot of amazing things about Linux. So at the end of the day, I say all that to say this. I didn't expect to stay with Linux through this challenge. I expected to go back to what I knew, what I made my living off of, Windows. Um, mostly 
probably because of things like OneNote and Office and that stuff. But now that you guys helped me find programs like Simple Note that uh, are alternatives to it, and I've become addicted to those, and Blender and Caden Live and Gim, uh, there's just no reason for me to boot back into Windows. Unless there's some AAA game that I just absolutely have to play that hasn't come out for uh, Linux yet, then maybe. But outside of that, I can't think of any reason. So I'm going to leave it at this. Thank you guys for all the love and support, for supporting these videos, for watching them, for providing comments, for giving me feedback. You guys have been incredible. And this series would not have been as successful without you. This is a young channel, less than a year old, and we've grown leaps and bounds thanks to you. Thank you for hitting the subscribe button, the like button, and for taking the time to care and watch this through. Uh, we will continue doing Linux material, even though the 30 days of Linux is over. We'll do other things as well, tech reviews, etc., that we've been doing on the channel. But in no way am I done with Linux. I've just scratched the surface. Just scratched the bare surface. And I'm learning so much every day, every time I turn on my computer, about operating systems and kernels and software and how it all interacts with each other, that it fits perfectly into this channel of wanting to fill your brains constantly with new information. Linux is perfect for that. So we're gonna stay around here for a real long time. That's my final thoughts on Linux. I hope you've enjoyed it. Leave your comments below. I will talk to you guys in some new videos that will be coming out next week. Don't get this far. Don't get the video.